Hello guys, good day. This is Anna of Reinforcement Club. Today we are going to talk about the Philippine Yellow Revolution, also known as the EDSA People Power Revolution, way back in February 25, 1986. This is the 30th anniversary of the People Powers Revolution, Part 1. Now let, let's bring back the history a little bit. A tiny bit. <laughs> now, wh- how in, why in the world did... It took place. There's just three things, though, that, you know, out from the readings that I that I got from different sources. Number one reason why there was Ed's Up People Power One is because of martial law. Well, there, the good thing about martial law is that uh, it maintains the, the safe and order of the entire country. They, you know, the, the soldiers and police were around to make sure that everybody follows the, the law. So that, you know, the government were able to control the crime. But the downside of it is that people have lost their freedom, especially freedom of speech. They couldn't say or do anything they want. Otherwise, they'll be in trouble. Another thing about martial law is that People were scared and uncertain in a way that they don't know if uh, they can able to trust their government. They don't even know what might what might can happen if they ever do something wrong. And lastly, the downside of that martial law is that a lot of people were arrested, tortured, or killed just because they 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 were against the government. So there were a couple of uh, propaganda during the Marcus regime. And so far, it's all, yeah, it's all in the past, but look, they were successful overall. It's now 2024 and it's 30th anniversary of that people power, which succeeded. So Grant, thank you very much. Another reason why this people power one took place is that it actually ignited when Benigno Aquino Jr. was assassinated way back in 1983. So that was a good start, where when people got angry, silenced in silent manner, because they can't go against the government, though. There were police and soldiers. They were just, you know, arrested because query, they're against the government. So there's there was in some sort a lose of freedom. Other than, you know, Benigno Aquino, who got assassinated. And the tipping point was that Marcos announced a snap election in 1986. So instead of having a, you know, Philippine election in 1987, he wants to take advance election, which happened way back February 7, 1986. And... Matter of fact is, he declared himself as the winner, despite of the allegations of fraud. So he can able to do that because it was martial law. He can do whatever he wants. And from that time on, Corazon Aquino, the ex-president, decided to challenge the, the result of that snap election. By the way, Corazon Aquino is the widow of Benigno Aquino. By the time when ex-president Corazon Aquino decided to challenge Ferdinand Marcos Sr. from because of that uh, result of snap election, millions of Filipinos, including Catholic Church members, gathered in Edsa One to protest against the government and in the name of democracy. So People Power Revolution One was a four-day peaceful protest in the presence of religious leaders. And one of them is Father Cardinal Sin. And the the main thing that really adds up to that, which makes the, the team, you know, team, the entire Filipino team stronger, is that the defense minister, Juan Ponce Enrile, joined them. I mean, the defense minister of Marcos government, plus the armed forces vice chief of staff, Fidel Ramos, also joined the entire Filipino protest. 
In other words, Juan Ponce Enrile and Fidel Ramos withdraw their support and protection on President Marcos' side. So that was the turning point. From that day on, in February 25, 1986, Ferdinand Marcos Sr. fled to Hawaii. He was actually exiled. And the good thing is, was, shall I say, <laughs> Corazon Aquino was inaugurated as the 11th president of the Philippines in 1986. So what was the impact then of Ed Sawan revolution? Again, three things. Number one, which is the main goal, the primary goal of the movement, there was a restoration of democracy by means of peaceful resistance. So during the protests, people were, were just singing songs and praises and making speeches. Another big thing is that Ed Sawan demonstrated the power of ordinary citizens to bring about big changes in unity across diverse sectors in political, religious, military, and other civilians with a common goal. Lastly, after the revolution, days, a couple of days after, there was a, an institutional reform that happened. So, They were the, the government, the new government under Corazon Aquino was drafting a new constitution, dis dismantling the old authoritarian structures. And of course, the government made efforts to address corruption and human rights abuse, which is still the issue up to this moment. Now, what are the lessons that we can learn from Ed Sawan People Power's Revolution? Three things. Number one. Unity. Ed Sawan participants taught us what, you know, taught us that when people come together, it is possible to bring about big changes. So those people in Ed Sawan really portrayed teamwork and cooperation. The second thing is that by all means, it is possible to have peaceful protests, even, you know, to the point that people could be against the government. So there's actually uh, a major issue, but Ed Sawan showed us that it is possible and it happened. So it taught, you know, the Ed Sawan taught us that problems can be solved without fighting, without gunshot, without any like involvement of police riots no need for that ed sawan showed us the way so it even it actually entails that uh, it is possible to talk about feelings and find solutions together to resolve conflicts even you know if it's it, if it's against the government we can try to do it peacefully make agreements talk about the issues and which is what the people are doing right now they they talk about the you know the the problems in in the community and into the entire city and what to do about it and of course they make solutions together lastly ed sawan taught us about fairness i know life isn't fair But the good thing about it is that we have the so-called respect. The Edsa One participants were fighting in the name of respect, respecting human rights, including corruption, no cheating election, hmm? and of course, freedom of speech. So, guys, to all of my fellow, fellow Filipinos around the world and in the Philippines, I hope we learn something from Ed Sawan and we can apply it in the different aspects of our lives. If you like this video, just click subscribe. You can even share the video or the, the podcast if it's worth noting. So it's and again of Reinforce Me Clubs telling you you never lose. You either win or learn. Have a lovely Sunday. <laughs> Thanks.